Hi, let's learn Go Tell Aunt Rhody. Let me play it to you first of all. Three, four. So this is an interesting piece because it uses what we call bow management or bow division. You've got tar notes or quarter notes and you've got tete notes, which are the eighth notes. And the tete notes are going to be half bows. So from your red dot to your yellow dot. And the tar notes are going from your green to your yellow or your yellow to your green. So the first thing that I'm going to do is play that song, so replay what I've just played, but bow in the air, so you have this, and I'll say the words as we do it. Ready, go. Go tell Aunt Rody, please play little bows, then play with long bows, starting at the tip. Now play it upwards, E string little bows. Now play it upwards, long bows to Go tell Aunt Rody, please play little bows, then play with long bows, starting at the tip. So it is quite complex because you have the tar notes, the tete notes and tar r notes, the snail bows as well. The next stage would be to actually play that on an open string. It could be the open E or the open A. I'm going to play it on the A string. So I roll over to the A and in my inner ear, I'm hearing the tune and the words, but I could play along with a recording of the actual melody. So here we go. Three, four, go. Now the bow stroke is designed by what we did before. We were talking about stroking the cat's back, and making these lovely shapes with the bow stroke. And you can start to explore the depth that you think is appropriate for this tune. And when you explore something, it doesn't matter if you make a scrunch, that's just a sound. It's not right, it's not wrong, but it might not be appropriate for that particular piece. So if I was to play, I'd say that was very squashy. Describe the sound, it's too squashy. But at least I'm going in a certain direction. I've gone too far. Now I'm gonna come back a little bit. So there's a deep sound. It has a real dark, rich red color. I could go even shallower. And that's a lighter sort of sound. It's a shallower arc. 
So you have to remember that the bow is just the thing that we use to convey energy. The energy of the bow is what creates a motion. So E, motion, energy in motion. So how we use the bow is vital to describe the story that we're trying to tell. Now, in Go Talent Rodi, we've been exploring this idea of the sounds that we're going to be using. The next thing that we want to do is we'll have a warm-up, basically, so that we get used to this idea of the bowing. Now, we could do that with an A major scale. So if I use ta, te, te, ta, as the rhythm, and I go, ready, go. So I can explore that every time I play. I can use that as a warm-up and I can say to myself, right, what kind of sound do I want to create? It might be that I'm thinking of a hot summer's day and there's a gentle breeze that's just blowing through the trees and it sounds like this. You can create any number of different sounds. The important thing is not just to use one single sound which you haven't thought about. You need to think about the sound all the time. So there's your warm-up for Go Talent Rodi. Now in Go Talent Rodi there are tricky bits as well and they tend to involve something which is interesting. When we play the violin we often think that something is straightforward but if it involves string crossing it's never straightforward. That's another aspect that we have to think about. So we already seen that the bow is having to change the amounts that it plays to divide evenly. That even division gives us a more even sound quality. But when we add string crossing into that and putting fingers onto a different string, now we've got a problem. And that's what we would call the tricky bit. So we need to practice that sort of thing. So here's the first tricky bit. It goes E, then half bow E, put three on the A string, one, two, three, then half bow back to the yellow, three, and then two whole bow back. So I'll play it first. So E, go. Little E, three on the A, two. That is quite tr tricky. So what I'm gonna do is break it down to do it slowly. Open E whole bow. Little E half bow to the red sticker. Stop the bow, put one, two, and three down on the A. Roll the bow over with the back of the hand, leading the arm. Going back to the yellow sticker, the top sticker, three on the A, go. Then Mr. Two. Now, when we get a tricky bit, we do it very slowly and we try and get it right. The more times you can program the brain that this is the correct way of doing it, the better it is. But doing repetitions is not always easy. You might think, oh, this is getting dull. No, you have to think, how can we do these repetitions? For instance, you could have a piece of paper and we call it the pizza. And every single time you do the repetition correctly, you get to put an ingredient onto that pizza. And then you can do that at home at the weekend. You can make your own pizza. Another way of doing it is by using devices and games, like children's toys with, I've got one which is a spiral, and you've got chickens on the spiral, and you can just move the chicken down, and then the next chicken goes down, then the next chicken goes down. Um, or you can do it through random things like a dice, roll the dice, whatever number comes up is the number of times you're going to try that tricky bit. Or you could be more formal with it. As a parent, you can be a bit sneaky. You have a pack of cards, choose five cards. Whatever five cards are there, you could see some numbers like a six, a 10, a, a eight, and you decide, you could say, oh, you've landed on 10. That means you've got to do it 10 times in a row. It actually isn't that long, it's only a short bit, so, but they'll get very good at it if they do it consistently every day, 10 times. 
Here we go. I'm going to just do it once more. So open E, whole bow. Half bow E. One, two, three on the A, roll over, back to the top sticker. Mr. Two whole bow. So there's one tricky bit. The next tricky bit really involves us thinking about how the bow works. In UK, we talk about up bows and down bows. I think it's a very unsatisfactory way of thinking about it because basically when you're on the G string, it's not really going up or down, it's going side to side. It's a better way to think of it as a push bow or a pull bow. And in the pull bow, we could also think about going, breathe out, breathe in on the up bow. Um, they don't think of it in terms of up bows and down bows in other countries. And I think that's a better way of conveying energy rather than thinking of it as a mechanical process. So this tricky bit is starting at the top sticker. So it's a push bow from the top sticker and it's half bows. And it's one on the A string, one, open, one, two, snail bow, open A. Just try that again. So from the top sticker, push bow, one, open, one, two, open A, snail bow. And then the last tricky bit happens in the second line. And it's this, basically, one on the E string with a push bow, one on the E with push bow, one again with a pull bow, and then open E half bow, one, two, three on the A, roll over, and then Mr. Two. It's very similar to the first tricky bit. So there's a commonality there. So if you practice these tricky bits and take them in turns, each day do a different one. And if one of them is getting really good, then you can set it aside, it's done. Then this piece will be actually quite an easy one to learn. The other aspect of it, which makes it very interesting, is the structure of the piece. It's what we call an ABA structure, because the first line and the last line are the same, and the filling in between is the diff different thing. And for me personally, this helps with memorization so that I can visualize the structure, but also in the beginning, the notes start from Mr. Two going down the way. So it goes two, two, one, A. But in the second line, the notes go up the way. So it's two, two, three, So a nice game to play if you're with your teacher or something like this is to get your pupil to play the first bar of the first line. So they would play this. The teacher plays the rest of it, finishing with. Then the pupil plays the next line, which is the first bar of the second line, which will go. Teacher plays the rest of it, finishes with. And then the pupil plays the first line or the first bar of the last line. And then the teacher finishes the piece. So you can start to engage with the structure of the work. It's very, very important. I hope that helps with Good Aunt Rody. It's a really beautiful piece to play and um, it's quite sophisticated, but it's the start of an exciting time on the violin. Good luck.